And gentlemen, and welcome to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around, it is going to be a hmm, could I say short and sweet? No, I would not call it short and sweet because short and sweet would be maybe five minutes or so shorter of this replay. But then again, this is going to be a um, quite a shortish game, should I say. And it's going to be something hopefully entertaining that you guys will enjoy. It's going to be a 2v2 match on Duclair. So if you guys have already noticed, this is going to be me in it. Playing with my teammate Ryan, Acoustic Rye. So even though we have been only co-hosting together and playing against each other, I suppose we can put our differences aside and be a team for a little short while. Our opponents are going to be Cheese Burglar and his neighbor, his actually real life neighbor, Heliar. And they are going to be versing us, as I said, on Duclair. Now then, just following up on the little the uh, live stream that we had yesterday. Um, it was actually quite a successful live stream, in my opinion, anyway. I think we got upwards of about 16 viewers. And, you know, for something that wasn't officially um, released by me, it was meant to be a sort of uh, practice, tweaking around the settings. I know that the quality on it was not perfect. Um... You know, that's okay, I'll live with that, 16 viewers, why not? It was a live cast, if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out, I'll put the link in the description for the um, Justin TV uh, Krebs Coho channel. However, be aware that uh, it is not the best of quality, there is a bit of stuttering and lag, so I've got to sort of tweak those options out a little bit. But anyway, so Cheese Burglar and Heliar are watching me, um, me and Ryan cast that game yesterday, and we decided to get in on some action and have a team game against each other. <laughs> now, Ryan and me have not played a team game before, and so thus we um, are kind of a bit iffy about what we should do. I'm not going to spoil the, the ending for you, or who wins and sort of that stuff, but we did decide about a sort of strategy beforehand, and that would be me going T1 to T3 um, with deciding what my doctrine could be, possibly blitz, and it is what I get. But anyway, let's focus on the game and get down to the action itself. Now then, I did get my Vermont Quarters, of course, I mean, we don't usually see a Vermont player without the Vermont Quarters, and I managed to get out a Volksgrandeer squad first off, and a motorcycle just afterwards. reason I do that is because these are two Americans, and now the thing we can expect about Americans is that you're gonna get your barracks, and you're most likely going to get your d uh, WSC, and that is going to mean probably snipers, MGs, and all that sort of stuff. And so the motorcycle makes it very good to harass, Not let alone they're also good at harassing engineers. I noticed there's an oncoming um, rifleman squad here, and just like, zooming away from there uh, just on that little road getting out of the action because my motorcycle is fragile I do not want to lose it so the rifleman my Volkswagen deers retreating the rifleman and engineers did manage to push on me let's see what's happening with Ryan Ryan is just capping away with his uh, cat and crad he has a number of uh, Panzer Grenadiers fighting on their hilltop let's look down at them shooting away at the guys in the building this is very cool looking sort of stuff uh, Ryan is slowing down this engineer squad, just trying to get rid of them. He has managed to push off one rifleman squad from the uh, building. I have man managed to be pushed off as well, so I did get a MG out to respond to the rifleman and the engineers because they're so good at um, suppression. And there you go, so the MG in green cover just doing some suppressive power against the rifleman and doing a very good job and killing them off as well. As you guys can see, just a few seconds of ready being down and almost half health on the rifleman. So not a good day for them. Let's uh, take a look on what's going in the uh, American space. They do have the WSC and we have the barracks as well from Cheese Burglar. So he has both of those. Uh, that just means that he's going to have um, a rifleman and his supporting infantry or supporting squads, whatever you want to call the snipers and that. Um, so, jeez, oh, this is a motorcycle. My motorbike actually managed to crash in a, in a mine and a very good placement by Heliar. That is such a, a um, 
common place where you would see activity for vehicles and by default vehicles do like to go on road say so they will specifically go on the road in order to travel faster so that might mean that it puts a very likely chance that the motorcycle will crash into a mine and that is what we saw that is so unfortunate losing a motorcycle so early but then again we will really have to see what comes out of that um, so engineers capping away on the south side of Duclair just capping away at the at the munitions and surprisingly enough I did manage to get a flamethrower um, on my pioneer but close range not even managing to take out any of the engineers the <laughs> engineers are even more effective than flamethrowers close range with their SMGs surprising indeed but I suppose that is what it comes down to the flamethrowers are better uh, against units in cover Okay, so Ryan, I told Ryan beforehand in this game to get a funk wagon, and that is just going in sweet with the uh, last replay messing about with the funk wagon. And I just want Ryan to surprise the Americans, perhaps, and cut off their resources. And so that was what I was hoping. So Ryan does have that uh, funk wagon out, and he is just traveling it about, just seeing what he can do with it. The MG suppressing one squad, a flanking squad coming in, and funnily enough, being totally obliterated by my my Volksgrandeers and having to be chased away. Now if you guys look at the minimap, I have separated the colors out for every player. This is a sort of preference thing. Um, I did not do it on my part, but I did get a bit of feedback that you guys wanted, or some people wanted there to be um, separation of colors. And I will say my honest opinion, I don't actually like the separation of colors. I like the opposing enemy team being fully red. I like the um, myself being blue and I like my ally being yellow that way it just makes more sense in my head that it doesn't matter who your enemy is um, they are your enemy and you will be combating them and that is just how I like to think of it so I'd like to hear your guys opinions we'll go with it if the majority of the people say that they want separated colors so why not um, in the meantime I will have to survive with this and you guys will have to survive with this as well so the funk wagon just I'm not exactly sure what the Funk Wagon is doing. It's being um, too much in the open. I'm not exactly sure what Ryan is doing. The Funk Wagon obviously has no weapon of its own. And I honestly have no clue what Ryan is doing <laughs> at the moment. He should be getting it on the side of the map. Like along this side in uh, places where there is no action. So that the Funk Wagon can actually get down to his nitty gritty business. By just keeping it there it's not going to be doing anything. So I'm not exactly sure what Ryan is doing. Um, Ryan has reassured me before this game that he would probably not be that good at 2v2s and I'm not exactly sure why. If you're good at 1v1s, you should be good at team games and above. So the Riflemen have moved in on Ryan's side. Uh, Ryan being totally chased away to his base and Ryan has got his logistic company. That's why we saw that Funk Wagon, which is being chased away by the bars. So the Funk Wagon, even though it doesn't cost any fuel, it does cost manpower and losing something like that so early um, can really put a toll on your men, especially that w if that was the plan. So I do have a medic bunker coming down, or was supposed to come down. The reasoning behind my uh, getting bu medic bunkers is whenever I have infantry, I like to invest in getting some of those medic bunkers so that I get grenadiers. Even if it's a small amount of infantry, even if it infantry aren't going to be my main strategy, if you have two or three squads, they really do pay off in the long run. So I do like to have a medic bunker um, down at all times. And even <laughs> think about the medic bunker, you, you don't even have to go for uh, defensive doctrine to to get the uh, bonuses from the medic bunker. I mean, you can just go for Blitzkrieg and they'll be sufficient enough. You don't have to reinforce next to it. It's not a necessity. The medics alone are something that pays off for the uh, bunker. So, in totally engaging the bars at the moment with my Volksgrenadiers, they're not going to do too well against them, especially if they're in cover. And so the bars taking a lot of casualties, trying to close in on me, and using the suppressive volley fire, hence we see this one squad just going down. And what is this? A SD KFZ 230 armored car. So that is the Puma coming out from the Sturm Armory, and this is what I love going for personally, the T1 to T3 strategy. Uh, with Puma um, and maybe mixing up the doctrines a bit, but that really depends on the situation at hand. So this uh, Puma just absolutely annihilating a few of these riflemen and chasing him down because there's two uh, men left in the squad, so I might as well do as much damage as possible. So chasing him down as much as I can right through the countryside 
and into the um, into the enemy headquarters just to see what I can do. Already seven kills, eliminating the rifleman squad entirely. Seven kills. I do believe just prior to this, it's unfortunate I couldn't have captured it, but I did manage to kill another rifleman squad as well. And so Ryan, I should have realized this. I didn't actually um, think that my opponent Heliar would have stickies out so fast. I thought he might have been teching up for something else, but instead, you no, know, he has gone for stickies, and that is my unfortunate loss to be losing a puma like that. However, I do have another Puma coming out just in the nick of time. Let's see what's happening on Ryan's front. Ryan is pushing in on the uh, right-hand side after being pushed back. Um, a bit of capping going away from Cheeseburglar. Cheeseburglar has many riflemen out. If we switch on over to him, many riflemen out. But the beauty about this whole thing is that he has the support squads helping him. So the MGs to um, pin down Ryan's oncoming attacks. The sniper to give some... Uh, to give some sight and also pin, pick off one of these Panzer Grenadier squads one by one. And so just quickly turning his MG around on Ryan, totally suppressing one squad and the sniper focusing on the flanking one squad. Oh jeez, Ryan is really taking a lot of damage. So in Ryan's base he got the, uh, he has a Panzer Jäger command, so that means he's going to be probably going for armored cars. And the armored cars, and yes, here, here we go, we have the armored cars on the field. The armored cars are pretty nice. Um, the thing I want to the thing I want to mention about this strategy is that the armored cars are kind of limited in uh, team games, depending on the strategy. So if I have Pumas out already, it's probably not the most wisest of thing to go for a armored car, just for the reason that the Puma is basically the exact same as an armored car, except it's more um, armored, has more health, sort of stuff like that. So I'd actually probably recommend going for the. Um, um, Panzer Support Command and going for uh, light AT half tracks and working towards the Panzer IV um, tank in the meantime whilst having uh, Panzer Grenadiers to do what they can in terms of capping. By that, by doing that you'd have a mixture of anti-tank, uh, speedy anti-tank should I say and by working towards the Panzer IV that would be very very good and the light AT half track would be very good at combating any M8s and any allied armor. So that's just my opinion, that is what I would recommend. It's unfortunate we didn't actually come across this sort of way. Me and Ryan were on TeamSpeak during this game and were communicating to each other, so that is why you don't really see much in terms of that going on. So Ryan, it looks like he actually produced another Funk Wagon, and I didn't actually notice this during the game, but he did produce another Funk, wa funk Wagon and put it right in the heart of this um, munitions point. So... If we just see this action, I'll quickly switch on over to the tactical map right afterwards. So just a bunch of pinning, pin squads going down. We have plus 10, plus 5, um, plus 5, plus 10, so 30 in total? Just one second, I will count that up yet again. Just want you guys to see this action going on, the M8 with his uh, upgraded 50 cal, unfortunately being actually taken out by my Puma, quite lucky that is, and with the armored skirts on there as well. My Volkskrenadier is just closing in on the M8 and going to be throwing off a few Panzerfrost if we switch on over to me. And that's heavily damaging him, I'm actually getting a Volkskrenadier squad moving away from the armor. Um, M8 just to expect him to run away so just by the time that my cooldown is done I can get uh, another Panzerfaust on him and yes that is what I'm about to do and boom Ryan Ryan's uh, not Ryan's tank Heli R Heli R's um M8 actually went down there, and maybe that was Cheeseburglar, yeah that was definitely Cheeseburglar because he is the one with the motor pull out. So if I quickly count the um, fuel that the allies have they have plus 10, plus 5, so that's 15, 20, and 30 over here, so 30 in total. With that Funk Wagon down, they're actually getting plus 23 as well, so that's a 7 less per minute. Um, that doesn't include also the negative effects on the munitions as well, there's probably plenty of that going on as well. So that Funk Wagon really does help a lot. It's unfortunate that Ryan had to lose one so early though. Uh, my Puma just getting in, helping Ryan out a bit on his front, just trying to do something. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to chase down that sniper. 
Maybe if I kept on going, I could have. But really, who knows? And Ryan just moving his funk wagon. Why? I'm not exactly sure. Was it discovered? It didn't look like it, but instead, he just went into oncoming fire. I'm guessing he tr was trying to relocate it to um, deny the enemies enemy of their resources as much as possible. But, ooh, that looked like a bad move. Lo losing a another funk wagon, indeed. So the allies with their medic, Heliar, picking up even more guys. This is sort of an unfortunate thing about separate player colors. They keep on changing every time you switch over to somebody else. So now Heliar is a green player. I'm getting my Puma yet again in on there. And what is this? We have uh, Cheeseburglar with his Ranger. So he has gone for the infantry adoption. Interesting choice. The, the Bazookas will do a lot of damage against any armor. And the um, Thompson, Thompsons can easily shred infantry apart. If we go and see what's Heliar, what Heliar is up to, he has not decided on anything just at the moment. And Acoustic Rai, no, he has not decided on anything as well. And me, I have decided on Blitzkrieg. Now, Blitzkrieg is sort of an interesting choice. If you're not near the, if you're not near any heavy tanks, any anti-tanks, should I say, the Blitzkrieg is actually quite a viable option. And if you don't have Creek Barracks as well, you can um, get the Blitzkrieg so that you can get the Panzer Shreks on the Storm Shrek, on the Stormtrooper squads. And you know the cloak obviously helps. And as you guys can see, working in combination, that light AT half track and my Panzer Grand and my uh, Stormtroopers just absolutely devastating this Hellcat way too early before it could actually do any uh, big harm on our forces. So pretty much half and half on the map at the moment. Um, just. Everyone focusing on the center, whilst Cheeseburglar has a, what could this be, probably an MG in this building, maybe a Rifleman squad, who knows. Um, but Ryan out with his scout car, this could be observation, observation posting, a high fuel point, and that's what he might actually be doing. Just so that he gets more fuel, so he can tech up. So interesting, I like seeing that sort of stuff. We had a bit of an engagement here. The Stormtroopers actually threw a bundled grenade on top of the Rifleman there and that is why they had to retreat, losing four of their men from that grenade alone. The Sniper getting in, uh, focus firing on the Stormtroopers, trying to do as much damage as possible and my bunker is taking some flak. So I have to get it repaired with my Pioneers before I lose it because the Medic Bunker is definitely my forward uh, center of operations. This is sort of unfortunate, by not having uh, the defensive option uh, doctrine I can't actually reinforce over at this front. So, it is quite unfortunate that I can't actually uh, reinforce over here, but then again, you know, just gotta make do with the best that you have. So the M18 Hellcat just getting right on in there, right on in and taking a few shots on my Puma. Puma, get away from there! Badly damaged engine from the light AT half track and my stormtroopers may be trying to get in to do some damage But there looks like there's gonna be too many men. There's riflemen. There's engineers There's a sniper picking away at me. That is too much to deal with and so I am just running away from that What are my Volkskrenzers trying to do? Maybe they're trying to get in for a Panzer Faust um, Could they be? And uh, no, they're instead no, they're <laughs> running away So I've also got my Kampfkraft sensor down and that is why we have the double veterancy on on the infantry at the moment so obviously investing into my infantry and trying to make the most out of that just retreating the squad and my medic bunker goes down oh no so that is a quite a big loss of the front so that means that they can push forward since we do not have much in terms of defending ourselves and immediately I'm putting down another bunker because medic bunkers are such a worthwhile investment um, when you get the free Grenadier squads from them, which I believe I might have gotten a few from this game, yeah, it's totally worth it. So the Americans just totally capping away on our side, on our points, just because they realize that they've done quite a bit of damage. My Puma getting way too close to Heliar. I keep on doing this, and this is something I really need to be more aware of, is that to keep your Pumas away from Riflemen as much as possible keep them at a distance because they will actually get sticky they will get shredded and as you guys can see just de badly damaged uh, just about to go down yet still six rifleman squads in there the stormtrooper is trying to get in and do something just trying to protect them but the rifleman throwing a last sticky on there and retreating 
So that has a lot of stickies. Three stickies is a lot of ammunition. So that's 35 times three. And all in all, that is 105 ammunition to take out a Puma. Now that could be worth it. It's sort of a, a, a um, eye for an eye trade off, really. Basically spending a lot of ammunition to take out something that costs a decent amount of uh, manpower and fuel. So engagement over here, my Panzer, my Volksgrenadiers getting in to combat these men. Focus firing on the engineers firstly, of course, just to try and get them out of the way. And then going to be focusing around on the riflemen. But one squad being heavily damaged and needs to get out of there. The beauty about um, vet Veterancy 2 on Volksgrenadiers is that they become a little bit hardier. They do not get their elite armor, however they do get some uh, bonuses, I believe, with uh, received accuracy, for example. And another sticky coming off from Heliar. If I have not learned my lesson yet, um, then I definitely, yet again, have not learned my lesson. <laughs> the sticky is just coming off yet again on that Geshut's wagon. Okay, so the riflemen retreating, some artillery coming down on my new bunker. Just one more man to be picked up, and then I can get another. Uh, free Grenadier squad from there, and wow, it looks like that medic with the <laughs> picked up guy was focused fire at, on and lost him. That um, lost himself, was killed. And oh geez, taking out a storm, uh, losing a stormtrooper squad there, and just about to lose a guest shoots wagon. Picking up my Panzer Shrek, and boom, using my own weapon against me to take me out. Ryan is just trying to support me, closing in with his MP44s. His sniper with the uh, Veteran C3 on him, be obviously being much harder to detect with that Veteran C. And also moving at normal speed from Veteran C3, even when camouflaged, it's going to be really hard for Ryan to um, catch, catch up with and take out. So Ryan really needs to get these Panzer Grenadiers out of here, and yes, they are retreating. Hopefully they'll make it home, but it looks like they will be. Just run a little bit faster with little Panzer Grenadiers, and you'll make it home. So, okay, so seeing what's happening on the northern side, Heliar is moving on, well, the north, and see, it's, it seems like a bit of a reversal. Heliar is now focusing on the northern side, whilst Cheeseburglar has his majority of the units on the center, just trying to provide, provide a sort of support. And what is this? I see a bunch of artillery coming down, flaming incendiaries on the ground. That is my Nurbelwerfer. The Nurbelwerfer is uh, my decision to invest some manpower to throw down some artillery and hopefully soften the lines of the Americans. Uh, maybe getting lucky and taking out the sniper, but then again, that is coming down to a bit of luck. So Ryan's armor card getting sticky yet again. And being taken out. So it seems like, oh no, me and Ryan have been losing quite a bit of units, especially this can crowd. That should not have been there in the midst of the action. We see multiple wrecks of the Panzer Elite. Um, and we have managed to take out a few of the Americans, but all in all, it does seem like the Americans have kept more of their units alive than we have. So this was meant to be a friendly match, and now it's turning into, into something more more violent and chaotic than that and the Americans moving in yet again so I did manage we did manage to push them off of the area over here and so that was my chance or my uh, sign that maybe I should move forward and take back some of these points but in another uh, counter-attack almost immediately focusing on us the men moving forward to try and pin us down and my guest shoots wagon are now being totally cut off. The thing is, I could run my guest shoots wagon right past these uh, riflemen, but that puts me at a very, very much so risk of being possibly sticky, especially from um, some of these vetted uh, riflemen squads since they have that extra sticky range. Very dangerous indeed. And so instead, I'm going to have to be doing a detour moving my units about the enemy lines but this is very risky if you look about the map the AT gun is replacing itself um, just repositioning itself should I say and there's a whole bunch of men on the center so it's gonna be very difficult to even maneuver this guest shoots wagon about and as you guys can see taking a few shots from the uh, anti-tank gun just managing to get out of there before another shot comes off but no <laughs> the Hellcat and the anti-tank gun just absolutely demolishing it crashing right into a tree and everybody on that 
um, on that tank just dying. So lots of cannon fodder, lots and lots of cannon fodder from these um, Volks Grenadiers and the Grenadiers producing another Grenadier squad. And I, I absolutely love this. This is what I mean by the investment. But still, having that Veteran C3 uh, and the Veteran C1 on the Rifleman is going to make them so tough and hardy and very difficult for me to kill and while de um, dealing a lot of damage on me. So I do believe that must have been a demolition charge. My opponent did have a demolition charge and just put that down. Taking out my medic bunker yet again, so that is my third medic bunker gone. How unfortunate, but in a way I do need it because I have so many infantry squads. If I didn't have it, then it would be such a loss on my part. Okay, so Heliar is moving in um, northwards. Northwards into oncoming enemy uh, attacks. Ryan is getting... Uh, a variety of MP44s just attacking away at the Thompsons, the Rangers but the Thompsons doing a lot of damage throwing that sticky not that sticky, that grenade just prior to um, the Panzer Grenadiers moving on that area and managed to take out two of them but quite a bit of an engagement here and so Ryan retreating yet again and what is that? I believe that is a bar that he has picked up. The MP44 is being absolutely suppressed now by those stickies and Ryan having a very difficult time indeed. So Ryan has multiple buildings out now. He has pretty much every single building. And this is um, it's sort of an iffy thing to have so many um, buildings just because... Hmm, just because you could have reused those resources on building more units. So if those Funk Wagons were alive, they obviously would have done a lot... Um, in terms of siphoning off uh, resources from our opponents, even having, even if we had those two funk wagons, for example, still alive, those would do a lot of uh, damage in terms of their resource income. But me and Ryan are really on the pushback at the moment. We are just trying to hold off with what we have. A big, massive movement of men moving in, and none of them upgraded as well. Just all of them with their initial guns, no Panzer Shreks, no nothing like that. Just so they can focus on trying to take out the infantry, because the infantry are the main problem at the moment. I do have the Geshut's Wagon out, and oh my gosh, the Calliope. I have my Geshut's Wagon out, so that would be decent enough to, to be um, anti-tank. What we need is some anti-infantry, and that was what I was talking about by having the... By having the Panzer IV, for example. That could do a lot in, to uh, take out these... Uh, these uh, riflemen and also light AT half tracks to combat the Hellcats and so on and so forth. I suppose the MP44s are good, but then again, um, if we're talking about teching and working together, you know, I think the uh, Panzer IV would have been a very good choice for Ryan to uh, go for. Okay, so lots of infantry and not exactly what sure to do. My new medic bunker taking some damage from the M18. And instead, my guest shoots wagon doing a bit of, uh, trying to do a bit of damage on the Hell Hellcat. Now, I'm being quite bold here. I'm thinking maybe I could get the Hellcat down and kill it possibly. However, the thing about the guest shoots wagon is that it has to rotate its entire body. And as you guys can see, a a side armor shot taking it down to half health now that is very good however the fact that I have to rotate my entire body just worked entirely against me these engineers put down another demolition charge beside my medic bunker and took it out yet again so that's four medic bunkers gone that is such a loss for me that is 600 manpower and 200 ammunition in total that I've lost from all those medic bunkers being destroyed but me and Ryan are just trying to work together, trying to maintain something. The points at the moment, 181 for us, 361 for the Americans. But really just trying to do something. The Americans are doing a very good job of keeping their units alive. Medics out, uh, Calliope out, um, anti-tank out, they have supporting squads, so they have a variety of pretty much everything. So they obviously have played together before, and that obviously works for them. <laughs> so my infantry trying to move in for one swoop, trying to get this uh, Panzer Shrek. And just managing to do that, obviously I do not want to lose that Panzer Shrek to my opponents. 
But really, so many infantry, so many riflemen squads, this is going to be really hard for us to deal with. And yet again, we have to retreat from our front because we cannot maintain it. And this is what I mean by having a Panzer IV out. Panzer IV would be just absolutely obliterating these squads. Yes, they could throw stickies on it, but however, if it was microed a bit well, it could definitely devastate these guys. I have um, uh, Pioneers on the field. It could get repaired easily, no problem. And my Norbert Verfer just chilling out, just doing a bit of craters, having a bit of target practice every now and then. But oh my gosh, if we just look at the map, the Americans have such a resource advantage over us. We are really being pushed back and we are just so desperate to make something happen. The thing I like about the Blitzkrieg Doctrine, and this has just occurred. The thing about the Blitzkrieg Doctrine is that you can get um, tanks by buying, by using manpower. And so if I had a lot of manpower, and yes, I did have a lot of manpower to save that up, I was able to call on a Tiger, and so the Tiger's just coming on the field. And this might be the sort of push that we need in order to move forward and possibly push off the Americans. So big engagement here, lots of anti-infantry. Um, there's MP40s on the Volks, there's MP44s on the Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers li landing in the mine. The uh, riflemen taking a bit of casualties from that mine as well. And just absolutely pushing the Americans away from this area. So we are able to claim it back in our name. The um, Calliope just throwing its uh, rockets down on the area just to try and prevent us from capturing the area, the strategic points, and the tiger just sitting on the top of the hill, being the king, not the king tiger, but the tiger, and just making himself known, just being the frontal sort of uh, spearhead. Now, as I was saying just a second ago, I was quite desperate at this time. We were 83 points in, we really needed to make a move in on them. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll be a bit bold with my Tiger moving in. However, at this point, by moving in, I put myself in a quite a bad position. Um, I was circled by a, uh, a few rifleman squads, there's an AT gun, and so I couldn't actually retreat it, move it back into the safe zone and so I decided okay maybe I'll just keep on going with the tiger move on into enemy territory and this is looking so bad for me because I'm going to get sticky and yes I am sticky and losing a lot of health on this, this tiger this tiger as as beastly as it is as defensive as it is how heavy the armor armor is and how strong the gun um, can shoot obviously not completely invulnerable. So this is what Ryan has. He has the Panzer IV out at last. A few supporting Grandier squads with the Panzer Shreks just getting in there, doing lots of casualties, taking out the Calliope. The Panzer IV was taken down, unfortunately. The, um, I believe a few uh, of the AT guns were taken out, and yes, there's one just taken out, and the, <laughs> the Tiger is taken out of mine. However, I have 530 manpower already saved up, already saving up for another one to come. Another Nurbelwerfer uh, barrage coming down right on top of the Rifleman, just trying to chase him away and do what I can, possibly to move in, and yes, an M18 was taken out there. The Sherman taking quite a bit of damage, and that is a wrench over there, over the top of it, and that is the Armor Doctrine going, um, going at its best. So all in all that skirmish, there was a lot of casualties. We did manage to destroy quite a number of the Americans' uh, force. We managed to push them off of the hill. We managed to push them back right into center where they reorganized themselves, managed to take out quite a bit of their army. However, in the meantime, losing that tiger uh, and having to fall back a bit. It's unfortunate the points are so low, 50 points at the moment, just a few manpower away from another tiger. This is looking like it could in a way be swayed around the rifleman just trying to make a counter attack on the on the hill but my puma just trying to get out of there and that insane range on the rifleman i was actually a bit frustrated when this happened because you know the, the i was trying to get my puma out of there and then all of a sudden all of a sudden out of nowhere a bar a a sticky 
came out onto that Puma, and that's the insane range that you get from the Vet 2 on those Riflemen. Kind of unfortunate things. I suppose I should have reversed my Puma, then switching it all it around altogether. So yet again, another Tiger out on the field, a Calliope Barrage coming down right on our forces. Oh jeez, the massacre, losing so many men there. However, my King Tiger, my, not my King Tiger, my Tiger just working away at the Hellcat. Obviously the Hellcat does not realize that he is being uh, attacked. Just moving my Tiger in there, just to make sure that the Hellcat will be destroyed. And so it was destroyed. <laughs> so I like seeing that sort of stuff. But the, but the Allies producing such cheap tanks, the um, M18s over and over and over. However, we don't see a tank depot out from Cheeseburglar, so that's kind of interesting. That M18 must have came out from the uh, from the off-map combat group. But yet again, a Nebelverf uh, barrage coming down. 23 points for us and 30, 361 for the Allies. Yet again, they're moving in on the um, hilltop capturing the victory point me and Ryan are just trying to do what we can but really that's gonna be quite difficult to do 14 points left and so much opposition we have a an MG over here I'm just trying to flank around it possibly get in on that MG but five points left this is really looking bleak for us two points all three uh, points in the allies hands and just two points left for the allies but oh no the two points left and that is us gone out of the game so very unfortunate loss for me and Ryan this was the first uh, team game that we ever played together um, things to note for ourselves in the future is that we should keep our unit preservation a bit better and we should work on strategy a bit better together so I'd l actually like to have seen Ryan keep those funk wagons alive and also possibly get a Panzer IV out earlier than um, the one that did come out. Um, in terms of myself, I do believe I was going down the correct road of what I should do. But, however, my unit preservation should have been a bit better. I shouldn't have been so bold with my units. I shouldn't have got Tigers in there and uh, losing some of those Pumas from Stickies too easily. Just The thing you have to realize about Pumas and any tanks is that you got to keep them away from riflemen as far as possible. Even if you're going to be inaccurate, it's better doing that than losing your tank altogether. For the Americans, they've done a very good job. I can't really commentate on it or comment on anything wrong that they've done. They had a variety of units. They obviously knew what they were doing. They had a pretty good unit preservation, uh, multiple veterancies on their units. So they played all in all very well, and I like seeing that sort of stuff. It's um, sort of nice to see that the that the user base, the fan base, is actually quite experienced. So anyway, this is a Krebs Coho replay cast. I hope you guys enjoyed the game and I will catch you all later. Have a nice day.